Hello and welcome to yet another exciting video about linked lists. In this video, we're going to look at a, I think, a sort of culminating linked list sort of problem, and that's the problem of adding to the end of a linked list. So let's get psyched about adding to the end of a linked list. Maybe we'll, we're so psyched we'll, we'll add in orange. So our method is going to be called add last <coughs> because it adds a value to be the last element of the list going to take in the list that we're adding to and the string data value that we're adding and remember our node class that we've been working with has strings as its data value but we could certainly create node classes that stored things other than strings as the data value I think it's just been nice for our examples to make our data value a string each time alright so we want to add to the end of the linked list and so if you think about it you want to add to the end that means we need to walk down to the end, right? List refers to the first node in a linked list. Do we have a picture of that? No. We really should. Hmm. All right. We'll suck it up and draw a linked list again. Here we go. I always forget to leave room for the word list itself. We'll just make a two-element list so I don't have to spend so much time drawing. And that's a slash, I guess. It doesn't look like a slash. Sorry about that. There we go. That's a slash. And list the list variable refers to that thing. I guess. Okay, there's my linked list. So if I want to add something to be the end, that means I need to make a node out here. And that means I'm going to need to walk down the list so I can attach that new node, right? What I'm past is the first node in the list, but I want to get to the last node at some point in adding last. So we'll we'll walk down the list. So that means I need a while loop. And in the course of the while loop, I'm going to have my my the way I advance is I get the next node and I store that next node in list itself. So I have advanced a little bit. And I'm going to keep walking down the list advancing in that fashion. In fact, that's the only line of code that's going to exist in my while loop, so I don't even need the braces. No braces. I'm going to keep walking down the list. Uh, let's say I'm going to start writing this incorrectly and we'll gradually fix it. While the list is not null, walk down the list. When we get to the end, we can store s. How does that sound? From a high level, it sounds like a great algorithm. Walk down the list, store s at the end. Uh, it turns out this code isn't even going to compile, is it? And it's not going to compile because s is of type string and list is of type node and there's no way we can store a string in a node variable all right maybe we meant to say let's make a node and i believe my node constructor took the data value which would be s and the next which i guess would be null since it's going at the end so how about that what does this code do let's follow along what it does because i think this is important to see well First it says list is uh, not null, so list becomes list get next. So at that point, list will refer to this node here, and that's not null, right? Its next is null, but list itself, being this node, isn't null. So we'll say list equals list get next again. List get next is null, so list becomes null. List becomes null. This last line of code then says list gets the value of new node s null, so list which used to refer to this node, and then referred to this node, and then referred to a null. Now, list refers to a brand new node with s and null. And at the end of this code, what happens to list? List is forgotten. The list variable dies, right? List is a local variable. At the end of this code, list dies. It doesn't matter that list referred to this node. That node is in no way connected to the original linked list. I have done nothing that would change the original linked list. So we're back to this picture at the end. So the code I've written so far does not actually accomplish what, it, what I set out to accomplish. And the key problem here is I need to actually make sure I stop not when list is null. When list is null, I've gone too far. I've fallen off the list. For this particular problem, I my goal of the loop is to find the last node, right? Find the last node. 
then I want to attach a node to it. This code doesn't find the last node, it goes past the last node. The last node is when list get next equals null. Right? That's how I know I'm at the last node. So while list get next is not null, I'm going to walk down the list. Uh, I think you've already realized now that we can't just blindly say list not equal null every time or list get next not equal null. It's going to depend on the particular problem. So, all right, I want to find the last node, so I'm going to make my stopping condition when list get next is null. Keep looping when list get next is not null. And when I get to the end, list refers to the last node. What do I want to do now that list refers to the last node? Well, when list does refer to the last node, so list is no longer this thing, list is now referring to this, now I want to make my new node with s and null just like before, but, and this is key, I want to change the next of the last node so that instead of being null, it refers to my new node. Let's see if I can find my orange text again. There we go. Alright, so don't store in list. Instead, set the next of the node that list refers to, which is the last node, to continue on to this brand new node. And that will indeed attach this node with S to the end of my list. So there we go. That's uh, it's not bad. I want to look at some other ways of solving this problem, and then I want to look at some, some issues with this. So here's another thing we could do to solve this problem. In fact, I'm going to write this as a new, new method below. So again, it was called add last, and it took in a list and a data value. And this time, the way I'm going to add to the end, I'm going to show you one other way that sometimes people like to solve these problems, is instead of having list, the variable list, walk down and stop at the last node, there actually was nothing wrong when our code walked all the way down to null. As long as when we get to null, we still keep track of the node behind it. So a very useful idea when we're walking down a linked list, let me draw this, is, all right, we're gonna be extremely sloppy in our drawing. If these are my nodes, then I'm gonna keep track of two pointers two variables. One of them is the node I'm currently looking at, and one of them is the previous node. And as I walk down my list, these two pointers are going to advance together. So at some when cur moves here, then prev moves here. We won't have this anymore. So they're going to walk together. If cur goes too far, prev will still have access to the node just before Kerr went too far. And we could use that idea in add last. It'll take me now 20 minutes to find where this, there we go. Okay, so two nodes, Kerr and Prev. At the beginning of our problem, Kerr should be list, right? Kerr starts out at the beginning. If Kerr is list, what is Prev? What comes before list, which is itself the first node in the, li in the list? And the answer is, null seems like a good choice, since there is no node before. Okay, now while cur is not null, so we're going to go all the way to cur falling off the list. Now I want to advance cur, and when I do that, before I advance cur, I'm going to store the old value of cur in prev, and that will effectively advance, right? So this this prev equals cur line says prev should come up to where cur is, and then cur equals cur get next means cur will advance to the next node. And uh, this is a subtle thing, but when prev starts out as null, if I were to say prev equals prev get next, which sounds like a good idea, that will fail if prev is null. So I like this idea of prev becoming cur like it's sort of like, almost like an inchworm. Prev moves up the cur, cur advances. Okay, and then at the end of this routine, 
what do we have to do? Well, now we have to actually attach the node. So Kerr went too far. Kerr fell off the edge of the world. Ah, no more Kerr. But Prev is still going to point to the last node at that moment. So we can say Prev, set your next to be the new node with uh, S and null. So here's a, an alternate way of writing it. It's a little longer, but some people prefer this this style of having Prev and Kerr advancing together. And, <coughs> excuse the coughing again, it turns out there are some problems where this may lead to a more elegant approach. And there are other problems, like this particular one, where I happen to favor just having one variable walking down the list. Really what we had is we had a single variable, which was Prev. We didn't have a Kerr in our problem. We just had Prev. OK. In the next video, we're going to discover that we actually didn't implement add last correctly at all. We, we don't have this right. Or we haven't dealt with something very important. So this sounded like a good plan, and we're going to pick it apart in the next video. I'll see you there.